So I, I think uh, coming up with a list of grand challenges is just great, but uh, towards addressing those grand challenges and even in the process of coming up with those grand challenges, the discussions that are happening across different communities, and I'm sure everybody talks about this, it's just wonderful. And this is, this is happening here um, uh, in the room where we are talking. So we were just talking about issues in neuroscience and how um, measurements made in neuroscience today are being influenced uh, by or can be influenced by a better understanding of what those measurements are being used for. And that boils down to goal-oriented communication in a way, which is, which is very interesting as an area of application for ideas that, so my background is in information theory, for ideas that information theory has developed over the years. Personally for me, uh, and you spoke about as a graduate student, this development from taking an information theory class, understanding information theory ideas, to understanding where all information theory can go to is is a very satisfying uh, uh, thing. Yeah. So there were there were two interactions that happened today actually today and last night. So today uh, a couple of hours back, I was talking to a neuroscientist from UCSD. Uh, she's a postdoc in Dot Coleman's group, and she was telling me about how measurements are made. And there was quite a bit of, you know, uh, she had to understand the language that I was trying to speak. I had to understand a lot of words that she was using. And in an informal environment, it's very easy to do. You can never do it in a talk. So I could probe her with, you know, questions on, okay, I don't understand this. I'm pretty stupid in neuroscience. And I've, like, watched movies and read science fiction, but not really any books. So tell me what this means. And she was uh, very okay with explaining it to me in a, you know, child's language. And last night was the interaction with the computer scientist from MIT uh, who works in cryptography. And we were trying to develop ideas uh, on uh, how do we sort of, there's an, there's an understanding of security within information theory, which has, for good and, uh, good and not so good reasons, found not much of application in practice. While computer science cryptography has been extremely successful in getting it into practice. Now, uh, what's the reason? And in order to understand that, it's very important to understand what computer scientists, how computer scientists perceive security and then try to see how information theoretic security can apply to that area. So we actually arrived at a tiny problem formulation, which we couldn't solve in one night. But the hope is that we can do it in the next, uh, or at least begin to address that using, let's say, the seed grant. For most graduate students, their experience doesn't really involve reaching outside the lab they're comfortable Not with. Not at all. Uh, but yet, you know, for most people, whether you go into industry or academia, you're going to be faced with this at some point. So why not start yes. now? <laughs> So You're actually right. Faculty don't. Faculty get to interact with each other uh, at a level where you know they interact across disciplines if they want to. Graduate students don't even have that access directly because they don't have those links established yet, or sometimes even the credibility is an issue. So this environment is really nice in being able to get graduate students postdocs together from different streams. I love the center. It's oh, it's cool. it's genuinely amazing. I mean, it's. It, it's often said that interdisciplinary uh, collaborations and interactions are very useful, but what has happened uh, is that fields have matured pretty much independently. over, And it's not over the process of last 10 years, but it's over the process of last 30, 40 years. But the emphasis that we are now laying on big data and bringing on new insights and new ideas uh, or new problems that challenge uh, us in different communities, information theory community, computer science community, and life sciences community. Uh, that challenge might push us again to come together in a way that we, uh, different communities came together during World War II and afterwards. And I was reading this book called The Information, which is written by this popular science. Right okay, it's a beautiful book. Yeah. It's, a, it's a genuinely beautiful book yeah. written by James Cleek, yeah. which describes the history of more information theory than just information. But it does describe interactions between Turing and Shannon at the time. And that is just excellent. And that was, again, an interdisciplinary uh, interaction. Shannon worked on building, I think, guided missiles during World War II. Turing worked on breaking codes. And all of them, uh, all of these activities, and these are interdisciplinary activities. Once you build something, it has to be interdisciplinary. It helps you enhance your perspectives on how to abstract, or uh, it helps you abstract models out of these things once you build these things. And I think that interaction of, theory with practice in general 
has weakened over time it's not disappeared obviously not but it has weakened over time and something like this can certainly help uh, build up that connection again okay.